cracking under the pressure. The severe damage to businesses and schools buried under tons of snow for days on end. Washington Governor Jay Inslee jumps into the race for president. How he plans to stand out and maybe up his name recognition. Yeah, he's not really on my radar. Video surfaces of Portland police telling Patriot Prayer members they have probable cause to arrest them. So why didn't they? And is social media silencing anti-vaxxers? We verify tonight on KGW News at 6. I am announcing today that I'm a candidate to become the next president of the United States. This we know. We are the first generation to feel the sting of climate change, and we are the last generation that can do something about it. And with that, Washington Governor Jay Inslee is officially running for president, and he's making the environment center stage for his push to the White House. Thanks for being with us. I'm Chris Willis. I'm Laurel Porter. Governor Inslee hopes by being the only Democratic candidate zeroing in on the environment, he can stand out in a field of candidates that seems to get more crowded by the day. Chris Daniels from our partner station in Seattle was there for Inslee's big announcement. Mountains, what they provide and what they symbolize. Good morning, how are you? Are key to Jay Inslee's newest adventure. It really is a good morning. We have the sun raining down on us. He's ready to take his local brand of politics. Now it is time for our nation to set a new priority. Into a national spotlight. So I am announcing today that I'm a candidate to become the next president of the United States. <laughs> A campaign that will repeat climate, climate, climate. That is to defeat climate change. Consider mountaineering legend Jim Whitaker a fan. Unless we have to take action or we're in deep trouble. The first American to summit Mount Everest says he believes the message could help the governor ascend to the highest peak. The environment is damn important and the globe is important. It's our home and it's threatened and a seen glaciers disappear uh, in my lifetime. Yet Inslee will have to climb over 20 other potential Democratic candidates. A morning consult poll this week shows support for Washington's governor among 5,000 registered U.S. voters at 0%. And climate change in another poll second to last among voter priorities. You're polling at 0% right now. What can you say about climbing that mountain? Well, I'm used to climbing mountains. I've done Rainier. I know the guy who climbed Everest first. I know that when you climb a mountain, you take the first step. And I'm taking the same step that Bill Clinton and Jimmy Carter took when they were pulling at 1%. They ended up pretty well. You know, it's been over four decades since anyone went out uh, carrying the Washington banner uh, in a serious presidential bid. King County exec Dow Constantine, rumored to be eyeing the governor's mansion, cheered Inslee's move and stayed coy about any other domino. Uh, there will be lots and lots of time in the coming months to discuss uh, issues of uh, Washington state politics. We're in it, baby. All of that will depend on if Inslee can reach new national heights or if his campaign message melts like the glaciers he's trying to preserve. Let's One get this for sure. job done. Let's go get him. Thanks a lot. He'll be doing it, at least for now, from a new mountaintop. Now here is a look at the list of Democrats running for president so far, including high profile names like Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, Cory Booker. A lot of people, as you can see, and there will probably be a lot more by the time the race takes off for real. One of them might be pretty close to home. A spokesperson for Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley says he will decide this month whether he'll run or not. It is a busy field with lots of names to consider. KGW's Pat Doris went to Vancouver to get a feel for how folks there felt about Governor Inslee adding his name to the list, Pat. Right, Chris. Well, this is Washington's fourth largest city, but it's not always been friendly to the Democratic governor. In fact, during the last election, he lost to the Republican here. He did get 96,000 votes, but when I was stopping people at random today on the streets, a surprising number had never heard of him or his policies. Blake Robinson is one of many I met today who did not recognize Governor Jay Inslee's name. I, I don't, yeah. After I explained his positions on the environment, Robinson thought, 
it rang a bell. Like I said, I, I, I'm pretty sure I voted for him, but I, I don't know that much, but I do like his platforms. He's not alone. Yeah, he's not really on my radar. He's not something I really follow or some, yeah. Some here feel the governor's been absent from Southwest Washington. I think he needs to get out in the public more and, and what his issues are and his goals for everybody to know who who he is and, and uh, what he's about. Jay Inslee is in his second term as Washington's you know, governor. He also served the state as a congressman and before that was a lawyer and a prosecutor near Yakima. Well, I think he's a good guy and he, he can be a president or gover govern. Yeah, he's still a governor. Inslee started talking about the dangers of climate change years ago, long before it was popular. Oregon Congressman Earl Blumenauer appreciates his platform. Uh, it'll be a good test to see how much America really cares about climate change in this uh, bizarre political climate. The message sits well with some I met in Vancouver. I like that, yeah, I think that resonates pretty well with me. Besides the political platform, simply having someone from the Pacific Northwest is appealing. You like the idea of somebody from Washington in the White House? Oh, yes. It's always good that you have someone representing you. As he launches his nationwide campaign, many I talked with here hope the governor will also set aside time for Southwest Washington. Yeah, make himself known. Yeah, tell us what he's about and if he's supporting the planet. Like I said, I'm all for it. That's awesome. By the way, Governor Inslee is not quitting his day job and he's even left open the possibility of running for a third term. The political reporter for the Seattle Times calls his presidential campaign a long shot. Back to you. Always good to have a backup plan. Thank you, Pat Doris, live in Vancouver. Governor Inslee's big push is obviously the environment, but we'd like to know in a KGW viewer voice poll, what issue matters most to you this presidential election? Is it the environment or is it immigration, the economy or national security? Maybe something else. You've been letting us know since our 4 o'clock newscast. Keep the voting going at kgw.com slash vote. You can also vote on your app, the KGW app. Just click that tile that says viewer voice. We have other news at 6. A vigil is happening right now for a man shot and killed by Vancouver police. Here's a live picture from our photographer on the scene. Everything got started around 6 o'clock where the shooting happened yesterday near West 12th and Jefferson in Vancouver. We've also learned the man killed was 29 year old Michael Pierce. Yesterday, just before five, callers reported Pierce waving guns and pointing them at people. Officers arrived and then shot him. Both officers involved are on leave, which is standard policy. Pierce's sister told KGW that he suffered from mental health. Clark County's measles outbreak ticked up yet again, as expected. Three new cases were confirmed, bringing the total number of cases in Washington state to 69. We've also learned a traveler with measles may have exposed others in Salem and Portland International Airport. At the same time, reports nationwide claim social media is starting to take a harder stand against so-called anti-vaxxers people who don't get vaccinations for a variety of reasons. Jason Puckett verifies whether social media is actually stepping in. Our Verify team works every night to set the record straight about the questionable things you see online. So earlier this month, Congressman Adam Schiff sent a letter to Google and Facebook saying they need to address misinformation being shared around about rejecting vaccines. Since then, multiple articles have come out about the spread of anti-vaccine content on social media. So, are social media companies working to tackle this issue? So to get answers, we reached out to a Facebook spokesperson who told us they are working to reduce distribution of health-related misinformation, which includes having health articles investigated by their fact-checking partners. And they'll also start removing certain advertised targeting options like vaccine controversies. As for YouTube, its parent company Google says it will begin reducing recommendations of borderline videos that could misinform users in harmful ways, including certain types of anti vaccination videos. So we can verify. Yes, Facebook and YouTube are taking steps to reduce anti vaccine content on their platforms. And if there's something you'd like us to verify, reach out at KGWVerify at KGW.com. You can also ask us on Facebook or Twitter. When we come back, where the heavy snowfall proved to be just a bit too much in parts of Oregon. I'm Matt Safino. We're finally getting some sunshine that's going to last for more than an hour or two. Look at Newport right now. Great sunset 
underway. Uh, the weekend will have a lot of sun, but not a lot of heat. And we'll take another look at that snowfall that we had in February.